Welcome back this week to Come Share the Joy. I thank you for tuning in. And I am excited today because I have my sister as my guest today. And she is um, your oldest. My, well, I wasn't going to say that. Oh, She's my big sister. Well, well that's kind of... <laughs> I am the big uh, sister, but she's the older sister. How's that? <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Oh, Lord. Oh, but I have to. <laughs> but anyway, before we go on, Linda, I want to thank our sponsor, Old Hill Your Plumbing. Uh, that is my cousin, Connie. Our Connie. cousin, Connie. Yes. And she is at Old Hill Your Plumbing, and that number is 614-777-9320. When you call, if you need plumbing problems in uh, in the Columbus, Ohio area, Call Connie today and tell you something right here and come share the joy. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get started. We got lots of good stuff to talk about because I'm going to talk about my sister. Oh, really? She is amazing, woman of God. Linda is, um, and it's my turn. I'm going to talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Linda is, um, like she said, she's my older sister. <laughs> she was the one who um, was the example. And what an example she was. My Lord. I mean, this girl right here. What you mean was? <laughs> well, he is. <laughs> she has been an example for me. She has been. Um, <laughs> he paved the way. Not only as a, a childhood, and I went my own way. I, she was much better teenager <laughs> than I was. She was. She was. You know, she could not have won Miss America and me being any prouder. When she was Miss Congeniality in Logan, West Virginia. Do you remember that? Very vaguely. You remember that little coloring book I made? You kept it for years. She probably still has it. I probably still have it. <laughs> but it was just an amazing. She's always been, uh, people love her. Uh, God has used her a mighty way. She is a minister and she mothered a church. Uh, her and her husband, the Lord told them to get the church there in Danville, West Virginia, across from Wendy's Prayer Connection Lighthouse. And Linda, it was her vision, and her husband, her late husband, he um, was all behind her. And they were going to put the house up. And, that we did. The house up. And uh, Daddy said, no, don't do that. He said, you'll lose everything you got. She said, Daddy, the Lord told me to. And uh, that's the kind of lady she is. The, house, the church is wonderful. Her son is now pastor, Mark Maker, and doing a wonderful job. Uh, passed the torch. Yeah. Let, let me add this. Okay. Uh, I think it's important. Um, uh, Dad was against me. You're going to lose everything you got, honey. He always told us to make money, save money, and all that stuff. And <laughs> you're going to lose Did you listen? You got no. <laughs> and I said, Dad, I have to. He said, that, nowhere in the Bible mm -hmm. does it tell you to buy a church building. And I said, Dad, I have to. And I said, my prayer is that you will live to see it paid for. And uh, we paid for it. We got it on 15 years, paid it off in 10. Mm -hmm. And the night we were burning our uh, mortgage paper, Dad was there, and my son invited him up to dismiss in prayer. That was a Saturday night, and he passed on Wednesday. Same so week. he saw it. Yeah. That was her. Then I hope you see it get paid off. But, but that's how God is. He's 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 wonderful. But this is my big sister, and and it's just little things that she does. The reason we're going to do this is because we're going to be talking about bell sheep. We're going to be talking about sheep and shepherds, and 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 before we go on, I have a little something for you. Me, <laughs> we did these at a women's conference. Oh. That's a little bell. Oh, how cute. And it's a little Bible marker. That's cute. And you keep that in oh, your yeah. Bible. Oh, and you yeah. remember that. You are my bell sheep. Oh, you are one of God's bell sheep. You know, he has these bell sheep, and we're going to get into that yeah. later. But that that's for Thank my you. bell sheep. She's always uh, helped me and, and shown me the way. And uh, it's been a light to me throughout my life. It's just little things like this. Like a couple of weeks ago, she came in and she said, here you go. A sister is worth thousand friends Amen. you know it's little yeah. things like that it's little things like this you remember that oh i do bad time this is <laughs> this is fool's gold she told me that uh you want to tell it go ahead no go ahead she told me that she had had a dream about me and i was going through some things in in my life and she told me she had a dream about me and 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 of course you know i love gold and uh she said i was in a field and i was throwing gold up it was flaking, and it came back down, and when it hit my hands, it was fake. And she gave me this little bottle of false gold. <laughs> Everything that glitters ain't gold. I remember. 
and I didn't heed to that. Uh, just like that. That and of course, then I learned the hard way, and, and I'm free now. Glory to God. Looking back, it's I'm looking, <laughs> looking back. You know, Lot's wife he told him not to look back. Yeah. In our lives, when God gets you out of something, He gets you into something new. Don't look back. That's exactly. Don't right. look back on where we came from. Absolutely. Just press forward toward the mark of the high calling. Well, Is that yes, what He said? Yes, yes. Oh, Jesus. That's what He said. But I am. Uh, it's always a joy to be with her, and we we preach to each other the whole time we're together. And then she's remarried. And my brother-in-law, John, and he is, he's been on the show before. He's a, a wonderful scholar in the Bible. He, I enjoy talking to him. And when we, we were traveling, they travel with me sometime. We were traveling and something about a number. I think it was 140, 153 fish were uh, in the nets when, the, on when, the right the, side. when they bought them. On the right, when they caught them, the disciples, on the right side. And he said, that means something. So we went to, and you know what that means? I am God. So everything in that word, everything in this blessed not word, an accident. it's no accident. Everything that happens in your life is no accident. Of course, we can bring things on. Oh, the Bible says good. by our disobedience, we shorten our days. Right, right, right. But we're going to talk about sheep. Rex Humbart, and, and what got me on the sheep was Rex Humbart. I was watching him one night, uh, an old, uh, he was an old minister. And he said he always, it was about Elvis, I think, and I yes. was interested in that. He said he always called Elvis his bell sheep. And mm -hmm. I thought, what in the world is a bell sheep? Yeah. Well, we found out. But Linda's going to talk about sheep. But the bell sheep, you know, the shepherd breaks their, uh, if he's unruly little sheep, he'll break his leg. And he puts it around his head, neck. And that little sheep lays there and it gets, it hears his heartbeat. It gets to know him. You know, animals can sense, sure just like little babies can sense. Let, look at Bella. She's laid out on Linda's lap. They can sense who likes them. And and the bell sheep is the one, when he puts it around his neck, it learns him and his love. And you know what? It'll go out and get that little sheep. It's usually stray. the one that has wandered off yeah. before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why he breaks this leg. Yeah, so leg Kate wonder carries it to look at one. <laughs> How about that? But that's the one that he'll send out, and it'll go out and get the ones that are going astray. Yes. If you're going astray today, if you've once known the Lord and you've turned your back on him, turn around. Come back. Be a bell sheep. Find you somebody that will be a bell sheep that will show you. When you get off, that little sheep will go. And, and I mean, it makes them the herd go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's your turn. I'm going to take it off. The, the main main thing that really got to me one time, I was in Israel in the early 90s, and, uh, of course, we were on a tour bus, and you think, Lord, what's a tour bus doing in Israel? Mm -hmm. But uh, we had these little skinny roads and a big fancy prevost, and I was looking out the window, and there was a great big pasture. I don't know how acres it was. And there was sheep, and there were goats. <sighs> and then there was another set of sheep. Well, they were grazing, mm -hmm. and as we were getting ready to come up on them and go by them, one shepherd hollered out something, and his sheep went they, that way with him. Oh, the word says, and my then sheep, no, the no, goat no. herder <laughs> hollered out his, and they went this way. And then finally, the last one, about the time we were going completely past, he hollered out something, and here he went, and I thought, his sheep know his voice. Shepherds are lowliest, lowliest, right? The lowliest in the Bible, and God chose the sheep, the shepherd. God chose him to come away from the sheep mm -hmm. and come to see the Christ child. No money, nothing, just love and awe, and and I can't imagine how them poor been shepherds feel. Well, <laughs> yes, they, sure, they've been. Some have mm -hmm. been looking for him all their lives, but here uh, they were honored. To be the first people to gaze upon the Lord besides Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, sheep are ignorant. And then I, I start thinking. I thought, why does he use that? I start, thinking, sheep. Other, <laughs> I start thinking the other day, now wait a minute. He knew what he was. He's the shepherd <laughs> and we're the sheep. Uh -huh. The pastor's the under shepherd. Mm -hmm. and, and here we are, you know, like they don't have any sense. They wander off alone. Other sheep follow them. I heard a thing the other day, Debbie, where this uh, uh, sheep took off and, and more sheep followed him. And 
There was a cliff, and he went right over the cliff, yeah. and the other sheep That's just kept fall. following, following, following. Finally, the first three or four lines that went down, of course, they died. <laughs> but the last several, when they did, they, they landed on the lamb's wool, yeah, and their bodies, and they weren't peeled. But uh, 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 I think, Lord, why do you call us sheep? Mm -hmm. We need a shepherd. Yes. We need to listen to that shepherd. Yeah. Bam. We need to, uh -huh. yes, we need to, <laughs> if we have to get up at one o'clock in the morning and go to somebody's house and yes. witness to them, they'll be ready when you get there, yes. most of the time. We got a brother that uh, it, the Lord told him one time to go to Columbus. Yeah, he had a friend, and he got out of that friendship, thank God, and that, it was a game. And uh, he got saved at one of our family reunions, and he was totally he had to put his gun in the car yeah. to go in the church and yeah. <laughs> accept yeah. Christ. But God said... Uh, get up and go to such and such street mm -hmm. in Columbus. And this boy had gone to prison for 40 years, 40 years. So here goes Scott to that corner and he sits there all the way from West Virginia to Columbus, Ohio. And that man was at that corner. Well, sure. He didn't know how in the world he got out in two years, but uh, that's the way he lives. And we, Debbie and I, God will give us things about certain people. And when he does you, don't let it pass. Mm -mm. I, I've prayed lately, Lord, let me be more sensitive to what you are telling yes. me to do. Just little things. Mm -hmm. little things. But these sheep are ignorant. They cannot, if they roll over on their back. They can't get up. Get this, Christians. <laughs> they cannot get up by themselves. Without the help. They have to have the help of the shepherd to get back up. So if you're a backslidden Christian and you're laying on your yes. back, and your your legs won't help you get up. Call up on the one that yes. you left, because he never left yes. you. No. Call up on him, and he will come and help you up. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how many times you've done it. Mm -mm. God will forgive. He will forgive somebody that really, really means it. Yes, yes. He said he would. He said he would. He said he would. The twenty third song. Oh, what's that say? Well, we all know that by heart. But let me go. Ahead. I love the first one. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. Want. Let me say this. Go ahead. Want. We we know through all of the word when we are in need and we pray, God will send it mm -hmm. by someone or somehow God will answer that prayer. That's, that tells me it's our wants also. And it's not always the exact moment. No, we no, want. no. And it's not. You know, I want something, but it ain't happened yet. Right. But it will. Yeah, it will. <laughs> he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, he, he leadeth me beside the still, still water. Still waters. Pastors, you've been there. You've been to Israel. You know, I think of, I think of the pastor as lush, green, mm -hmm. plenty. It's not, is it over there? No. It's just a little piece of grass here yeah. and a little bit here and a little bit here. They have to work for it, but they have to let the shepherd every once lead in a while. them. Yeah, every once in a while there's an oasis. You know, it's got grass wow. and trees and everything. Uh, here's the wilderness mountain. I'm assuming that's the one Jesus went to for 40 days when the devil aggravated him. And right straight across from it, not, I don't know, not how many yards, is Jordan. And it's an oasis. Mm -hmm. The city of Jordan. It, it's just an a awesome place. But when I was there in the 90s, they only got 1% rainfall a year. A year. 1%. 1%. And the Israelis were so smart. That from Mount Hebron, they brought it down, the snow capped mountains, and they brought them in cisterns, and they had water. That's, That's awesome. Wow. Well, <laughs> it reminded me when we were out in Vegas, we were at this, what was the name of that uh, desert? The Crystal? can't remember. Oh, Johnny would guess. And, and anyway, yeah, I remember. Would, but anyway, would, uh, we were there, and they get just a little bit of rainfall a year, and all at once it started raining. Mm -hmm. And we got to see it. Seven rainbows. Seven in one place. I mean, they would just be everywhere. And we were like, oh, my God. God was showing us. I cut you all. Yeah. And the friend that was with us took a picture to uh, uh, and had our, somewhere and had us a pillow made with those. Yeah, to remember yeah, that. To remember that. It was a great memory. It was. Yes. It definitely was. Well, let me say this. Okay. Still waters. Yeah. He leadeth. Still. Me besides still waters. A sheep cannot handle moving water. Oh. They drown. It scares them to death. They're they, stupid. They, yeah, they're oh, stupid. They, again, they're... <laughs> Why did he use that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> oh my Lord, he's trying to tell us something. We need Jesus. There's nobody that cares for the sheep like the shepherd does. Duh. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. He's been good to me my entire life. I started. You're 16 years old. 17. Oh, 17. I just turned 17, but he started wooing me when I was three. My uh, my real dad died, and he was, uh, here I was, three years old without a daddy, and, and it was a trauma. It was a traumatic time. And Mom had three little kids, and she was 25 years old. And uh, since then, the Lord would woo me. But I, it was, I was 17 before the ugly days came, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 17. Uh, up until then, if I started getting into any kind of meanness, I could remember my mom's face. But after that... God's face took over. Yeah. And I, awesome. I, it's awesome. But uh, I've served him since I was 17. And then mom and dad got married. You were just a baby. Yeah. He, like, he, was uh, a yeah. <laughs> he was the best daddy. He was the best daddy. And we're sitting here today in mama's furniture. She's not feeling well. And the living room is off from her bedroom. And she started to want to sit there and look out the front window. And this is not a sitting couch. Mm -hmm. this, and everybody in the family is like, oh, I hate that couch. It's beautiful. <laughs> But it's one of those you just look at. So I get it. Awesome. awesome. And uh, we're drinking out of Granny's tea set. Yep. I thought that would be good today because our Granny was our bell sheep. She was. Oh, Lord. She was. Our Granny Horn was our bell sheep. Our Mom and Dad, Mom and Dad didn't get converted. They were the best. They were a year before I got saved. They I was saved. I've been saved seven mm -hmm. years. Me and Grandma were the only ones that were going. And it was seven years before they came in. But Grandma would kneel by her bed, and she didn't care who heard her pray. No. No. And you are never going to be the same after you hear a and you're saint of mother. You'll be laying in the baby's yeah. side. Yeah, a saint of mother. Call out your name in prayer. <laughs> it don't ever leave you. But she was a great bell sheep. She, she was. was an example. She was. She was such an example. And loved everybody. My mom would say, Mommy, it's flu season. Don't kiss everybody in the mouth. But she did. Yeah, she didn't That's kiss. who Granny was. She, she loved everybody. Kiss. She didn't kiss. She did. And but, uh, there's a lot of nieces and nephews that are preachers. Oh, how many do you think? I don't have a clue. There's, there was Roger Scott, you and I, in our family. And Ginger. And then Ginger's a and Mark, niece. And Richie. Mark Richie. Uh, Dale, that's just uh, Jimmy Maynard, <laughs> yes, and it goes on and yeah. on. Yeah, it's awesome, ain't it? And be an example, be a light, be a bell shaped to that one in your family. Thank you, Vic. He said, "He restoreth my soul, and He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake." Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff they comfort me. Thou. Uh, they'll comfort me. They'll prepare us the table. I love this one. Uh -huh. They'll prepare us the in table. In the presence of my enemies. The, at, That's here. In the presence of my enemies. And my cup runs uh -huh. over. Your enemies will see your cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to look at. He showed me that. Um, they're going to look at you towards back. heaven after we're gone. Debbie, I believe this. They're going to hear every word that you heard said to mm -hmm. them. Every word you preached to them. They're, they're going to remember that, but they're going to look and they're going to say, how simple that would have been yeah. to, to say, yes, Lord. Yes. How simple. It's a simple thing. We sometimes make it too hard. We do, don't we? Yes, we do. We do. <laughs> but they'll prepare us a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And my cup, my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Oh, right, 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 right. And that armor, my little armor man set. My boyfriend's right there, my little armor, armor man. man. Linda was one that found that. I'm going to tell that story. Oh, go ahead. We were in a church, and I went in, and I had been studying the armor of God, put on the whole armor of God. And I seen this at this church, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I said, Pastor, you wouldn't want to sell that, would you? And he said, oh, no, sissy, so-and-so just got me that. I love that. And I said, I want one. And I want one so bad. My, my sister, my big sister, <laughs> remembered me saying that. And she was shopping one day. So we, we enjoy that. That's uh, our therapy. Yeah. Yeah. We were. At, she was shopping and she called me and she said, I just found your man. And I said, do what? She said, I found your man. She said, they got one. It's, it's a bronze looking and they've got one that's silver. And she said, it's an armored man. I said, oh my gosh, get him. She said, which one? I said, the bronze one. She said, you never asked me how much it was. Let me tell you. I said, I don't care. <laughs> I want him. And I got one. And and it reminds me, every time I go oh, out yeah. this door, you get that armor get your on. Shield on. But yeah. you know, on that armor, the whole front of him is all covered. Look at that. He's covered. And the back is uncovered. Uh -huh. You know why? Because 
Goodness okay. and mercy shall follow me all the yeah, days of my life. You know what I mean? That, and, and, uh, and, and Isaiah, he says, we're covered with a cloak. Yes. A cloak covers your back. But he might be the cloak. <laughs> Ooh, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know if you can tell, but we love the Lord and uh, and, and always have. But uh, Sis and I are different. I mean, we love one another and, and probably would fight somebody <laughs> over each other. But we've never fought. No. Except with our mouths. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, where was I going? I was going somewhere. We have opinions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Debbie is glitz and... What kind of style is this? Uh, I am a world. She's a world. I am. <laughs> Linda is... Lace, Victorian, but she, I'm was, also blue jean skirts. Grace has her little lace it, stuff on. She and, lace shoes right now. And, uh, and uh, Lawrence Ivy. Yes. Because her husband so is, her husband is like a, Abbott he was a world wild hunter. He hunted all over the world <laughs> and he's got these animal heads all over their house. And, and, <laughs> and it's beautiful because she put her flu flu, her lace, and oh, what? It worked. I'm going to go buy a new stuff. It's beautiful. We work. <laughs> Somebody told me that your kitchen, how you did the kitchen, uh -huh. and blue, that that's the, the new thing now, that blue. It's all right. Blue. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody but we, we love, we love. Yeah, somebody, how they liked our kitchen, he's, they said, well, it's blue. It is blue. It's, it's me. It is blue. <laughs> Debbie Pink, I'm blue. Uh, yes. And I've got Mama's couch. And yeah. I'm excited. Awesome. It's got a little Queen Anne uh, city. And it's going to take space up in my library because I don't really read a lot. If somebody wants to read a book, they just have to move the couch. Right. <laughs> they want to find it. My books are right there and get to them. Bob was the reader. But I am so thankful for all that the Lord is doing in my life. He is moving um, daily yes. in our lives. Yes. He's not finished with us. Daily. He loadeth us with benefits. Every day. Daily. And his mercy is new every day. My friend Patty <laughs> Cook asked me one time, she said, aren't you ever satisfied about church and stuff? I said, I will not be satisfied until I awaken his likeness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so If y'all could see Miss Bella, she's just yeah, laid I'm up. patting her. <laughs> she'll stay right there. I'm not nervous, I'm patting her. She likes to stay on, the, on TV. She, she, she thinks she's on Linda. camera. <laughs> I don't know why. Linda has a dog, her and Johnny, it's a... Uh, he wanted an ugly dog. It's a hairless dog. It doesn't have any hair. Linda can't thing. stand hair. Hairless. <laughs> when we were home, oh, can I tell you? I don't care. Okay. When we were at home, uh, if I'd get a kitten or a puppy, she'd be like, get that thing out of here. I don't like, you know, she never liked animals. I so, said, I wouldn't mean Well, let me tell this. I go <laughs> up, she remarried, what, five, six years ago. Seven. I went up, has it been seven? I went up to visit one day. My sister, who didn't like animals, had a raccoon laying on her shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, it was Johnny, where is my sister? Because <laughs> this is a clone. This is not my sister because she can't stand animals. I mean, the woman, no, no. So Johnny loved animals in it, and the coon stayed a little while and it left, but that was the pet coon. <laughs> I was like, oh, girl, get that thing He on. said it leaves and it gets girlfriends. So and it did. Can. We mm -hmm. found a girlfriend left. <laughs> well, and, uh, so they got this dog, and it doesn't have any hair because Linda can't stand dog hair, cat hair. And so the dog is hairless. She bought him a hairless dog and Curly. That's what he thinks, Curly. <laughs> curly, because it doesn't have any hair. And Curly's a sweetheart. He had a cat one time that could not meow. They'd step on his uh, tail and stuff, and it would go crazy, but it couldn't meow. It, it couldn't, couldn't meow. meow. Oh. And he called it meow. <laughs> <laughs> That's Johnny, right? She's alive. She's she alive. alive. But Bella likes the camera, too. But, um... It is always an honor to to have you all to tune in to my program. We just want to share the joy of our salvation. Yes, yeah, right. We just want to share what the Lord has done in our lives. Back to mom and dad, they were those people that were wonderful, good moral people. No better. No, no, no better. Find any better? And I, I can remember they got saved like a, a few months before I did. That uh, was uh, on a, a Easter Sunday at sunrise. Uh -huh. Mom always went to sunrise. Uh -huh. Because my dad, she would go to the graveyard and help light candles yes. and stuff all my life. And uh, she, it was fitting for her to get. Yeah. Get. And so daddy did too. And, and, it's, and I'll tell you what, I had made statements, and I'm sure you have too. When my mom and dad get saved, I am going to shout this uh -huh. church down well. I couldn't even go to the altar. When mother went to the altar, this is the God's truth. 
Well, she went to the oh, hospital. <laughs> I couldn't move. My feet were planted uh -huh. on the, like a th third row back. I couldn't move. And I couldn't understand what it was. Big puddles mm -hmm. of tears. Well, I was the only one sitting or standing back there. Everybody else was up. But I got to see Daddy go. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. That's awesome. It was awesome. But I was out of fellowship with the Lord at that time. I was 13, really, when I was converted far before Mom and Dad. And, uh, she went on vacation. I blamed it on her that I quit going to church. <laughs> I always blame everything on her. That's all right. Linda always, uh, she'd come home. She was a beautician and she worked and I, we took care of her like a queen. Yeah, they Marta was too. more than me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Marta. Our baby her. sister graduated from kindergarten the same day I graduated from high school. And that's something. She's our baby. Then. So you're eight, you're eight years older than me. And so how many would that be? Twelve. For Marta? <laughs> Twelve. Yeah. How about that? But we are family, and, you know, we might talk about each other, but we don't let nobody else talk about us. <laughs> <laughs> but God is good, and I thank her. I thank you so much. I love you so much. I love you But remember, when you see that little bell, that you are my bell sheep, uh, find somebody. Yes. Find somebody in your life that can show you Christ and show you his love. Look for mentors. Yes. Look for, we, there there were so many in the church before we got saved. Uh -huh. Look for mentors. Look for, like Grandma, we're not supposed to be exactly like anybody else, but we need to pattern our actions yes. and our moves and stuff. I, I'll tell you, the, the night I got saved, the reason that I was at church, I had gotten my driver's license. And Grandma, <laughs> she wanted to drive. Grandma was visiting and she wanted to go to church. Uh -huh. And I took her to her little old church at the end of the, uh, the foot of this mountain. And uh, it was on a Tuesday night prayer meeting, and Grandma and everybody was praying, you know, and I went up. Mm -hmm. And when I went up, she came up and prayed beside me. Mm -hmm. that, was when I, that was when I really got saved. And then the 2 o'clock service we were in, her last service, mm -hmm. her last service, uh, I was repenting over something. I don't know what it was, <laughs> <laughs> but I was, at, I was at the altar. And uh, Grandma was beside me. Yes. And when we got to Mom's, she told us how sick she was. And that was probably 4 or 4.30. Mm -hmm. And she died at 6 o'clock the next the morning. The next morning. Mm -hmm. And she was 86 years old. Yeah. And pray for our mama. She's not not well right now. But uh, she's 95. And, you know, God, we can't stay here forever. No, no. But we have mentors along the way. Yes. Uh, and you were mentioned mentors. And Conrad Cook came in my yeah. mind. And, and Linda and Dan were great friends with Patty and Conrad and your son Tim yeah. uh, went with them at an early age and started traveling, got singing, playing gospel music mm -hmm. at what, 12, 13? He started with another group of 12 and then yeah. when I went with them, he was about 15. How about that? So, and, and of course, a lot of people know him, Tim Maker and a wonderful man of God and travels and loves Jesus with all his heart. But Conrad Cook was, a, and everybody knows, old ship was on and uh, Moses, take your shoes off. He was Hallelujah a family to the friend. Land. Now you talk about provoking. Oh gosh, he loved. We had Bible studies all the time, and Conrad, he never complimented. He, uh -uh. <laughs> and he would he would get something stirred to get you. To he said, "I want to talk about the bad." And you had to answer your own questions. He, oh, he yeah. had a way of making you answer your own questions. But he encouraged me with my music. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He encouraged me. Yeah. To do what I'm doing now. Now, see, Deb, I told you how different we are. Deb is going places. I mean, I don't know. We're all, we don't have any idea, but we know it. We know she's going places in her music and in her ministry. Uh, I'd just as soon be up a holler at an old, uh, you know, raggedy church. Hot belly yeah, stove church, that's what she <laughs> said. And she oh, said, you're the plush chandelier and carpet. I'm like, Linda. <laughs> I'm the I'm the one that goes to the where the pews have no padding. <laughs> no, she's a but I love it. I love it. Well, you know what? what? Why don't we take it out in a song? Take what out? Shackled by a heavy burden. Come on, Dan. Yeah, she's a no. Do shackled by a heavy burden. Somebody out there may be burdened. Oh yeah, yeah. And they need Jesus. Yes, yes. You need him. Oh, God gave me this the other day at church. Okay. I stood up and I said, Pastor, and I started towards the altar. And the little rail uh, fence there that's in front of the pulpit, and I got a hold of that, and I was uh, I was holding it. I said, Pastor, this is the way we are when we're burdened down, and I started going like you know a little bit like I was carrying a load, uh -huh. a load. I got to the other side of that fence thing, and 
I said, that's you with the burden. I said, I don't know who God's talking to, but listen here, what all, what all, what all he, he can do. All he has to do is come and go, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> give, it to yeah, me. give it to me. I'll carry it for you, he said. <laughs> we, yeah, it tells us to take no thought for tomorrow because it's going to take care of it's itself. It's going to take care of itself. Our steps, yes. steps are charging. Yes. steps are charging. Help us, Lord, to listen to you. But let's go off in a song. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same he touched me, oh, he touched me, and all the joy that fills my soul, something wonderful happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. You might be out there today. Maybe we've said something that would uh, strike a chord in your life to say, I need Jesus. Or fix something with your family. I want you to lead him. Fix something with your yes. family. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to sing one of these Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something wonderful happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. Are you whole today? Are you just walking around existing? Are you just, since all of this mess from 19 COVID, are you in a place where you're fearful? I met a wonderful man yesterday, Christian, and uh, he was putting some carpet down for my mama. And we talked and talked and talked, and he has not been to church. And love the Lord, he talked about him the whole time he was there. Uh, he's not been to church since the COVID started. Okay. Listen, world. <laughs> A third of the church will never go back. It's not a big okay. But we're getting ready. We're fixing <laughs> to have the biggest outpouring of the Holy I Ghost. I believe that. And that's revival. Ever taking revival. place on this world. The Lord is getting ready to show yes. it off. Yes, he is. He's getting ready to show off. I, I believe with all my heart. No matter how low it gets, I'll not keep believing it. No. So listen here. If you're fearful and afraid, you know, you can get COVID at Walmart. There you go. Yeah. You can get COVID from one of your children coming home from school. One woman said, honey, people just get COVID in church. Well, that's because we love each other. We hug each other. Just up, you know. But don't be afraid. Don't be, don't be fearful. Let the Lord guide you. He's with us. He has us engraved in the palm of our hand. I saw a picture yesterday on, on the, the, the web, and it was like this, Debbie. The Lord's hands, of course, and a human laying in his hands. That's the way he's got us. That is the way he's got us. When uh, my precious husband, uh, that he's the daddy of my three sons, when he was passing, uh, he was sick forever. And we had been, oh gosh, we had been 10 years, one hospital right after another, one sickness right after another, one infection, one time three infections. And uh, they just didn't know what to do with him. He's a military man. He was agent on poisoned and it took him 32 years to die, but it was awful the last few few little bits. But uh, he never gave up faith. He had no. more faith than anybody 
That's why I was still here. Yeah. <laughs> that anybody I ever he had faith for other people. Yeah. <laughs> and I, he just was, he was just an awesome fella. But um, you know, God has a time. My first sermon was, "It's once appointed unto man to die." Yes. After this, the judgment. When we die, Christians, listen. I believe this with all my heart because of Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham and the rich man. Looking up and could see them. Mm -hmm. I feel it's, like it's that's going to be some wrong. of the torment. Yeah, well, it's going to be some of the torment uh, of, of the lost. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. And we will not miss them one bit. We won't look down right. and see who came and who didn't come. We would just be in a place that no more sorrow, no sickness, no pain. No sickness. No gossip. No talking about you putting it down. <laughs> I have seen many preachers destroyed from yeah. gossip. And uh it's time for God's people get to in unite. There. Absolutely. Get in there. Unite with the people down the street. Speak to your neighbors. Yes. I used to tell my girls when I'd have my women's meetings, if you got an enemy, make them a chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. But do not put X Lax in it. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. I want you to go ahead and lead them in prayer. Somebody out there may want to accept Jesus as their Savior. Yes. Yes. And uh, that's that's an honor to us. I'm telling you, that is an honor. Lord, as we come before you, humble, Lord, that you spoke of us as a lowly sheep. I thank God that you're the lamb that took away the sins of the world. Yes. I think that you told Peter and probably the other Disciples, go feed my lambs. Go feed my sheep. You can be a Christian today. Most of the time we uh, witness to someone, they'll say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to change some things. No, 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 no. That's a cop out. Get in there and let him change. Yes. I'll tell you, we got a guy in our church, and this may be you. Worst drug addict. The worst cusser. The worst alcoholic mean to his family when he came people were scared to death of him and his little precious uncle was a preacher for a hundred years probably and he said to him if the lord can save you he can save any devil so that might be you today yes. or you might just be one of them good people like my mom and stepdad was you might just be one of those people that better than most christians more morals than most christians we didn't hear cuss words we didn't hear dirty jokes and we, Mom, they raised five kids to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. and we thank the Lord for that. We, yes. By their example, and they weren't even Christians. We wanted to live those good moral lives. And every one of our brothers and sisters has got nice homes, good companions. And we're praying for Debbie to get someone <laughs> that's as good to her as my husband is to me. We're so glad to be here today. We're so thankful that going out, of, we don't know. We do not know. Who will hear this? Lord, we don't know who's praying for us. I've had people say, I pray for you every night. And it shocks me sometimes. Yeah. Thank God. Let's hold each other up. Get in there. Get in there while still time. Yes. In Jesus' yes. name. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. You can contact me at 304-687-3579. Email me at DeborahDD at SuddenLink.net. Find me on Facebook or any of the social media. And we'll pray. Yes. I've got people. I call on Linda and John. I've got people that well, pray. Well, why not? It does.